every person who does you with me has a profound experience of spiritual embodiment and sacred embodiment and mindful movement. So in Eurythmy, we become aware of our the flesh and the blood and the bones and how miraculous it is mm -hmm. that we have been able to convene these cells and these molecules so that they can be a temple for us mm -hmm. for the decades of our life. Mm -hmm. And they have to become luminous and penetrated yeah. when we do Eurythmy. I mean, to become conscious of all of that. And then to feel this etheric life field so that Eurythmy, like Tai Chi and like yoga, mm -hmm. Eurythmy deals with life movements and not with mm -hmm. athletic physical no. movements. Yeah, yeah. It's the field of movement. And then we have to become agile and creative and originators of our feeling life so we can, according to artistic fantasy, choose to color our gestures red or blue, blue. or yellow or... Yes. And then to penetrate it with the wisdom of the logos, the word, and access, if you will, superhuman dimensions of yeah. consciousness, the, those forces that bless our existence on earth. Have you, have you had experience, for instance, um, uh, because of the earth me, of how much earth me have done, that the thinking, your thinking becomes more fluid? Absolutely but in a very different way than it was when I was a straight A student in college. That's what I'm, that's kind of, that's what I'm getting at. There's a difference between, uh, tell me a little bit more about that. I, my friends affectionately, or perhaps critically used to say, I have a mind like a mouse trap, <laughs> because I could be <laughs> mm -hmm. in those days at the university incredibly aggressive with my thinking. Mm -hmm. I would dive into the right answers and mm -hmm. ace my tests. Yes. And as a Eurythmist, I had to, if you will, dissolve that acuity in order to become much more perceptive to a different level of reality. Mm -hmm. So that right now, I've become finely attuned to accuracy, truth, harmony, mm -hmm. resonance in different mm -hmm. fields. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can sense patterns. Yeah. I can understand whether something is inherently accurate in itself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or in disharmony. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, to, to me, that's the gift uh, of, for the future because uh, we have to think something before. I mean, anything, anything that has come into existence had, has been thought first. Absolutely. Somebody had a picture of a machine or something. So, you know, this fluid thinking uh, that makes it possible also not just to have it, um, let's say, in concepts uh, that are sort of stiff, uh, to have something that's malleable. And that's, know. as you know, the practice of doing Eurythmy, that we learn to experience that we come, that we are the originators of our movement. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily dwell on this uh, as we do Eurythmy but we become conscious that we are creating the will forces which then create the feelings, mm -hmm. which then generate the movements, mm -hmm. which we then dance yes, in yes. form. Yeah. And in doing that in Eurythmia, I find we get in touch with exactly those forces that have created thinking. Yeah, yeah. And as you know, it's amazing to do that also in harmony with the speaker. When we do performing Eurythmy, well, yes. and I perform with a speaker or with a musician, mm -hmm. and they're thinking the same thought, yeah. thinking yes, the same words, tickets. and they pull them down yes. them through their speech at the same time and with the same dynamic mm -hmm. that I pull it in through my movements. Mm -hmm. And so there's a actually a very um, sacred marriage of intention and creativity and energy between the speaker and the eurythmist or the yeah. musician or the eurythmist or in the best of cases also between two or more eurythmists who are moving together wow, exactly there, we have access to a kind of intuition yeah. that is 
something that we can seldom meet on this planet. And it's amazing. I mean, when you when when you watch some of the orchestral, you're with me, that people don't bump into each other. Isn't it incredible going backwards, <laughs> forwards, right, left, and yeah, your rhythms look like they're fish swimming together. Fish exactly. never bump into each other. No, no. or birds. Exactly. And yeah. we don't have to think about it. We yeah. actually become so sensitively attuned to the field yeah. that even if someone came right at me, I would yeah. Yeah. respond <laughs> out of the wisdom of the field. Exactly. So yeah. and now maybe we, we can um, backtrack and see, did you find the destiny uh, of your 12-year-old question? I absolutely did. Yeah. I absolutely did. And miraculously, because Eurythmia is so new on the planet, mm -hmm. I couldn't have expected it, mm -hmm. that I would meet it. You know, I thought perhaps I would be a nurse or a sci I, you know, with what some you profession be? that yeah. one already had names for. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was 12 years old, living in Chicago, there was no name for No, for anything <laughs> for like that. But I was although, actually, although your rhythm was already incarnated. It was. Maybe you can say something how it, how it started. Well, I just wanted to say, but essentially I was looking for spiritual science. Yes, yes, As yes, I because might. you wanted to bring the two together. Exactly. Yeah. So I kind of marvel at that. Yeah. So how was your rhythm started? Interestingly, the very, very, the prelude to the story of how your rhythm started was a woman named Margarita Voloshin, who was an, a painter, writes in her autobiography of how in 1902, or 1904, she was listening to lectures by Rudolf Steiner, where he was talking about the prelude to the Gospel of St. John, and he spoke about, in the beginning was the word. And she was so moved by those lectures that she went to him afterwards, gave him her hand and said, thank you so much for that. And she tells in her autobiography, he looked her deeply, deeply, deeply into the eyes and said, do you think you could dance that? And she says, actually, I had the feeling he was asking me to mm -hmm. ask him something. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out what he was asking me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I fumbled a reply after a few awkward moments and said, why, well, yes, I think one can dance anything that one feels deeply enough. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me again and he said, but it's not a question of feeling. And she says, and I had no response to him. And she writes in her autobiography that when she reflects on this moment years later, she realizes he was more or less begging her, inviting her to say, Rudolf Steiner, how can I how dance can I do the it? dance of creation? Exactly. How can I dance the yeah, word? Yeah, yeah. But it's the law of the spiritual teacher that he can't teach anything mm -hmm. that hasn't been asked. Yeah, And yeah. so he couldn't say, come, let me show you what I mean. Yeah. And it wasn't until 1911 that Eurythmy was born. And there was a woman named Clara Smits, newly widowed, and her daughter, Lori Myers Smits, had, was 18. And she had, was pursuing Delacroix Eurythmics mm -hmm. in Paris. Mm -hmm. And because the mother was newly widowed, she was asking Rudolf Steiner for advice about her future. Mm -hmm. And he said to her, and what about Lori? What is she doing? Mm -hmm. And uh, Clara said she's in Paris, but I really wish there was something that she could do that was connected with our work, spiritual yes. science. Yeah. And he said, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Send her to me. <laughs> and Lori agreed and she came and that was the beginning of Eurythmy. Mm -hmm. And so it was born out of the stream of dance that this lovely young Lori Meyer Smith had. Mm -hmm. She wanted to dance, and she had a great love for spirit. Mm -hmm. And so Eurythmy became this marvelous stage art, which mm -hmm. is, can be very um, strikingly inspiring to see. And yet underneath it was this other stream of the deep, deep sacred dances of in the beginning was the word. Yeah. And some people say if that had been the, if Rudolf Steiner had answered, if Margaret de Wollesheen had had the right question, 
the rhythmy would, would have, have been... come through a different stream. Yeah. Through her work. Yeah. 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 And the questions. Okay. I mean, for the young people, uh, the question, "What is my destiny?" How do they find that? Mm -hmm. I mean, schooling isn't exactly uh, finding the destiny. Um, normally, as far as I can see, it's more to get you ready for a job. Absolutely. And there's a difference. Absolutely. You know, and so, so how do we hear that, what the Bushmen of Africa call that knocking in the heart? Yeah. That knocking on in the inside of the heart. Uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, how did your book come about? Because I know that you've recently published one. I wrote a book, in, came out one year ago. But I have been asked by people for decades mm -hmm. whether I could, couldn't write something about you with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I had a hard time putting into words all of the extraordinary experiences that I have in you with me. And then at one point, a wonderful young woman who had been asking me to write a book said to, gave me the leading question. And she said, Cynthia, what do you actually do when you do a sound in your rhythm? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I said, well, that I can answer. Yes. Because for me, every sound is a being. Mm -hmm. And when I do a sound in your rhythm, the first thing I do on a pre-conscious or very um, deep level, without ceremony, but just automatically, or just with a quick shift of consciousness, I invite that being mm -hmm. to be with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I make my will available to that being mm -hmm. so that I can embody it. Mm -hmm. For instance, I said to her, the spiritual being of the sound bee, mm -hmm. born out of the zodiac Virgo, mm -hmm. the bee is the sound of the mother embracing mm -hmm. the child or of the angel embracing mm -hmm. the human being, mm -hmm. the sound of protection and boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm going to do the bee, I invite mm -hmm. this gesture of blessing to be in the room yeah. and then to take hold of my will. Mm -hmm. And when I found the words to tell her that, I realized that that's the way that I can write the book. Yeah. Yeah. And so I undertook to write a book Actually, the book that I have always wanted to read about you with me, mm -hmm. but no one's written a book like this before. Yeah, yeah. I must say, every book that I've written about you with me until now mm -hmm. has been a book that tells a history of you with me, mm -hmm. or perhaps a few exercises. But I wanted to write a book that would introduce to people the nature of these sounds whom I have come to love dearly. Yeah. And which would also enable people to do your rhythm and to get to know these beings on their own. Yeah. Because I know there must be thousands of people in the world who wonder what your rhythm is. Well, yes. And they have no access to find out exactly. what it is. Exactly, exactly. And so I wrote this book. It's called Eurythmy Movements and Meditations, mm -hmm. A Journey to the Heart of Language. And for each sound, of the standard English language. I have a meditation mm -hmm. and a description of how to do it and a description of how the sound lives in my soul mm -hmm. as well as in my body mm -hmm. and illustrations mm -hmm. for the field of life, and the field of movement mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I invoke when I do the sounds. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a sacred service of love yeah, and I think yeah. for my next step, I'm going to be able to also talk to people about it through other media as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do have the media now, so of course that's why I'm doing the filming, because Absolutely. people need to see who you are and what you do and how deep your love is for you with me. Yeah. And of course mine too. Absolutely, Marianne. <laughs> so maybe yeah. on that note, we'll stop for today and uh, we'll keep track of each other. Thank you. I think so, too. You're right. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. Okay.